And what I want you folks to tell our audience right now is that here you are, you're a professor at BYU, you're Mormons for 30 years, you're doing all of this, and you send your, one of your three sons on a missionary journey for Mormonism, and what happened? I realized when we moved to Utah that things were a little funny in the church. It wasn't quite what we thought it was. And we started having these questions. But you know, life was good for us in Mormonism. We were dug in. We were successful and people looked to us. I was so full of pride. When our third son went on his mission, God got a hold of his life in an odd way. He was sent to Orlando, Florida, and he came upon a Baptist preacher who showed him why Mormonism might not be Christian. And Micah was such a Pharisee, like his dad says he was, he went into the Bible to try to refute that pastor. But what happened was God opened his eyes to the falseness of Mormonism when he read the New Testament. He had a similar experience to us. We went into the Bible. The spirit was strong. God showed us a new God, and we realized the old one was false. But this happened to Michael while he's on his Mormon mission and while he's a leader in the mission. And he says it took him, he didn't have any Christians to talk to. He only had the New Testament to read. He said it was a little over a year, maybe a year and a half, before the full import of the idea that Mormonism was wrong, <laughs> just plain false, hit him. But he was brave enough Three weeks before it was time for him to normally come off of his mission, he had an opportunity to bear testimony of the Mormon gospel to 60 other missionaries. And he took that opportunity to say, all you need is Christ, Christ alone, faith alone, grace alone to those 60 missionaries. I'm sure that didn't go down real easy, so what happened? He got called in by his mission president. They took his temple recommend away, called us at home, said they were going to send him home. He did get on a plane and come home. They told us he'd be released honorably. But when he got home, his stake president really reamed him out and asked us to bring him in front of the high council the next morning, which we assumed meant they were going to excommunicate him. Mike and I were so confused. We so had trusted this kid. We didn't know what was going on, and we were really confused about what the Mormon church was seemingly trying to do to him. We did not take him in for that um, church court. Mike was only home two days and went back to Florida. And all he said to Mike and myself, totally turning our lives upside down, was mom and dad just read the New Testament. And that's when we began to do it in earnest, didn't we? Yeah. It took me 10 months of reading before I got to the place where Micah was. 